In my last video, I shared my thought of how I was going to approach adding RAM to my system. In this video, I'm going to actually implement uh, the RAM chips uh, by getting those added to my breadboard and wired in. And there were uh, maybe a couple of changes from my plan uh, also that I will share with you. So first, this was the graphic I showed in the last video. Uh, the 286 processor is capable of a 16 megabyte uh, physical address space. And my, my thought was I would put my ROM at the top one meg, my RAM at the bottom one meg of that. Uh, what I wasn't quite understanding was that that is only if I am in this uh, protected virtual address mode of the processor. And initially, I'm not going to be working in that mode. I'm going to, going to be working in a, a simpler, what's called the real address mode. Uh, and in that real address mode, uh, you really don't use A23 down to A20 of the address uh, space. So really, you're, you're limited to one megabyte. And that means that I'm now going to shrink my RAM down to the first half meg, my ROM to the half meg above that. And that'll take me to my one megabyte limit of my physical address space. Now I have a pair of half a meg ROMs and a pair of half a meg RAMs, which means I've got one meg of ROM and one meg of RAM. Um, so I'm ultimately going to be wasting half of each of those and uh, going to do something like this. So the ROM and RAM technically will overlap, but the way I'll do the decoding is with address 19 so that I know if I'm in the RAM half or the ROM half. I suppose ideally I would go and find uh, ROM chips that are half the size of what I'm using and same with the RAM. And I did a quick look and I can find those chips but they're really not any more cost effective than what I have. And on the RAM I couldn't find anything as easily accessible as what I'm already using. Um, so really it's just more effective for me to use these larger capacity ROM and RAM chips and just to waste the extra space. Which is fine. It's just a maybe a couple extra pins on the breadboard. Uh, this is the current schematic that I have. Um, I did have uh, some feedback to maybe take a look at uh, how I was using S1 and I did have it previously that I'd be trying to both output from my RAM and write to the RAM at the same time, which if you think about it, that, <laughs> that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So uh, I think I did get that corrected. Uh, and uh, I maybe simplify this too because I'm no longer looking at those address lines 23 down to uh, 20. And really what I'm looking at um, for the ROM up here, you're going to notice uh, that I am looking for uh, address 19 now coming into this. So if address uh, 19 is high, that means I'm going to be using the ROMs up here. And then down below here, you can see address 19, I'm taking in through an inverter. So if it's low, then I'll be using my RAM. So RAM is the bottom half of my memory space for the one meg and ROM is the top half. And then I'm still looking at MIO, COD and A and S1 with these values uh, down here. And that should, I think work and I have actually uh, our, before I before I even put in this uh, RAM down below I did make the above changes and tested my ROM uh, and that all still seemed to be working fine and uh, after I added my RAM I also ran it and tested and my ROM still continues to work. Um, I have not tested the RAM even though I have it connected and I'll show you that uh, set of connection that activity here coming up but I have not tested it yet. I need to write some code that actually will write something to RAM and retrieve from, from RAM. And I need to learn some assembly before I want to get, uh, get too far on that. And more specifically, uh, x86 assembly. If I uh, zoom into this, uh, just a little bit better view, this is what you're going to see me wire up here momentarily. Um, so the RAM address that I'll be working in, uh, really I'm ignoring this first um, basically four bits uh, so I might show a zero zero all the way up to FF there but I'm ignoring the first four bits and RAM will go from this zero up to seven FF FF and then picking up at eight zero 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 will be my ROM uh, and again that is uh, 
address uh, 19 that's helping me do that over here. Uh, you're going to see I have this uh, RAM write, which is just an inverted uh, S1. And um, right, there's a couple of places I guess I could have pulled that from, but um, I, I do have that tapped in there. Uh, I'm still continuing to use BHE here and A0 over here, so none of that has changed. Uh, and if I back up, I marked this RAM right over here, which is an inverted, if you trace this back, that's an inverted S1. And I guess I've got S1 also being inverted down here, so I'm, I probably can uh, simplify that. I'll do that in the future. I don't need to be taking that signal and inverting it twice, uh, two independent times. As far as my code, I did adjust that. And so now my code, I have it. Again, the, the really all, all this code is doing is I'm putting uh, this FFF0, or sorry, F0, F0 into my 16-bit uh, A register. I'm then outputting that register to a zero address, and then I'm jumping back up, and I'm just gonna keep repeating that. Um, because I now need to look at only the top half of ROM. I'm basically filling the bottom half of it with zeros, just so that if I ever see zeros coming up, I, I know something's a little off. Uh, and then I fill with knobs, uh, which that was a hex 90, all the way up until I get to this uh, F, 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 zero, remembering that I'm kind of ignoring this first, well, the first uh, half of this F, the first four bits there. Um, but if I'm looking at the full 24-bit address, this is what it's going to look like. And that means this is my first line of code that's going to run at that location. And then this down here just simply fills anything left over at the end with ones, again, just so I can recognize that. Uh, later, I need to figure out how I can jump to a location that's maybe uh, way up here at the midpoint of this ROM or the beginning of my usable ROM space. Um, I, I tried doing something real quick with that and I was getting an error. So there's some assembly that I do not understand yet on that. Uh, so with that, I will show you the clip of me spending a couple of hours and I think I cut that down to a couple of minutes. Um, really just going through and making a mess of wires. So enjoy my mess of wires. <laughs>